All right, everybody, welcome back. Another day of Hamlet. We have a, oh, <coughs> sorry, I can't see him. I guess color today. Chase, say hi. We've been doing a little bit of coloring uh, while I was waiting for the Raising the Sun video from my freshman to load. Here's my coloring job. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. I know, it's pretty good, pretty good. Can you show some of your pictures, Jason? Can I show this one? And Jason did a strawberry themed sloth and a banana themed llama. Pretty cool, right? This is a llama with candy. And he's working on candy llama. If anybody can, the candy llama can. It's the candy llama can. Okay, so we're going to pick up with the beginning of Act 5. I know you read it, okay? So let's talk about it for a second. Uh, we said Shakespeare gives us a little bit of comic relief to give us a break from the tragedy of Polonius dying in Act 3 and Ophelia there at the act, end of Act 4. And also as a way to lift our spirits up a little bit so we can plummet even further and harder at the end when everyone dies. And you've already read it, so you know what happens. But in case you haven't, I'm going to give it away right this second. Okay? And I ask you to write about the theme of Circle of Life as you saw it in, in this act, this, this interaction between the grave diggers and the Hamlet, Horatio and the grave diggers, right? And it's so clear. And uh, you guys hit on it when you, when you responded to me. We have the grave digger who is digging a grave. Well, first of all, they're doing the back and forth wordplay, which you probably didn't understand at the beginning. If you looked at it and understood it, or you understood it to begin with, you didn't find it funny. It's okay. Elizabethan audiences would have loved it. Um, and then we have Horatio and Hamlet coming up with the one grave digger still graving, digging the grave. And he's pulling up these bones and skulls and whatnot. Now he's digging a grave for Ophelia. Hamlet and Horatio don't know that. But we do as the audience. And when the audience knows more than the characters, it's called dramatic irony, right? See my dramatic pause there? So he's pull, he's digging this grave for Ophelia, and it's the ground is so full of dead bodies, he's pulling up skulls and whatnot. And Hamlet's like, oh, look at that skull. That could have been a lawyer who was big and famous. Or if you put it in our terms, you know, that could have been, um, whew, I'm trying to think of a, that could have been Wilt Chamberlain, who ruled the courts in his day, or that could have been Alexander Hamilton, who uh, did so much, or inspired the great musical. <laughs> um, that could be, you know, some famous person that's dead, or some regular person that's dead, and, and now he's playing, he's singing, and he's, and he's acting like he's, you know, he might as well be juggling with his skulls. That's the way Hamlet looks at it, because he has no feeling in his work. And so, uh, we get that everyone dies and, and passes away, but then him adds to a little bit more later when he talks about, you know, Julius Caesar or Alexander the Great who conquered the, the known world, you know, and now is a piece of cork filling up a, 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 a beer barrel, you know, or Julius Caesar is the insulation that goes around the window to keep the cold away, right? Yeah, baby. Yeah. Which book? Yes. Yeah. It'd be hard to teach it if I hadn't read it, right? Yeah, I've read it lots. Lots. Good question, though. This is Shakespeare. He wrote it. Because why? Why'd you ask? Oh, because we, as I said, we as the audience know, but the characters don't know. And that wouldn't make sense if I hadn't read it. Love it. Great. Cow. I love it. All right. So let's start here on page 247, or it's where Horatio and, and Hamlet come and have this interaction with the grave digger. And uh, some more of this wordplay, right? Some of this supposed to be funny and entertaining. Hamlet says, uh, whose grave's this, Sarah? And the grave digger says, mine, sir, and goes back to singing and doing his job. And Hamlet says, I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. Now, not lie in it like lie in your grave, but lie, like tell a lie. You lie while you're in the grave about whose grave it is. Um, you lie out on it, sir, and therefore it is not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, yet it is mine. 
thou dost lie in it, to be in it and say it is thine. Tis for the dead, not for the quick, therefore thou liest. Remember, quick means live, living, alive, which is why we call, uh oh, did I get something? Which is why we call quicksand, quicksand, because the sand is alive. It's live, living sand. If anybody can, the candy llama can, oh, the candy llama can. <laughs> I gotta do this. So he says it's for the dead, not for the quick, not for the live. Uh, in the Nicene Creed or the Apostles' Creed, we used to say, um, "Sit us on the right hand of God the Father to judge the quick and the dead." The living, it's alive. The living saying, "All right, hang on, baby. What man dost thou dig it for?" He says, "Okay, fine." Who, who are you digging it for? And he goes, for no man, sir. What woman then are you digging it for? For none, neither. He can't get a straight answer out of this guy. Who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, she's dead. <laughs> so it's supposed to be this funny play. And if we were reading it or you were watching it, um, you, it'd, it'd be a little more entertaining you know, than just me doing it by myself, right? I have a book at home, yeah. Yep, that's right. They have the book and they're reading it with me. They've already read it. We're going. I'm just going over what they've already read. All right. All right. And then he makes this joke about how Hamlet's gone mad and he's gone to England there and gone to England to recover his wits. And it's okay if he doesn't. And why? Well, everyone's there as mad as he. A joke at, at English people, right? Because Shakespeare's English and he's a little, you know, poking at the people in the audience. Okay. All right. So he goes on to say, who um, talks about who lasts long on the grave. And then the, the important part I want to get to, the grave digger pulls out a skull, right? I, I wish I had a skull. I got a skull. I had a boot ahead, but that'd be disrespectful. Hang on. Okay, so this is a skull that doesn't light up. He says, this skull... Right? He goes, here's a skull now that hath, hath lined you in the earth three and 23 years. 23 years. Here it has, whose was it? A horse and mad fellows it was? Whose do you think it was? Nay, I know not. A pestilence on him for a mad rogue. He poured a flag and a rinish on my head once. This same sir, skull, sir, was Sir Yorick's skull, the king's jester. Right? The, the, to entertain the king. Yeah, who has died? It died 23 years ago. It's been in the, in the ground. And Hamlet takes the skull. This is the famous picture you see of Hamlet holding the skull, you know, on the wherever. That's the little part on our book. And Hamlet says, Let me see. Alas, poor York. I knew him, Horatio. He says to Horatio, I knew this guy. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He has bore me on his back a thousand times, and now abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I had kissed. I know not how oft. On the face where it's just his jawbone. I don't know how teeth. He says, the lips I kissed when I was growing up. He helped raise me. I loved this guy. He was awesome. Where be your jives now, your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table in a roar? Not one to mock your own grinning? Quite chapfallen. I get you to my lady's chamber. Tell her, let, let her paint an inch thick to this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. He says, prithee, Horatio, tell me one thing. Okay. What's that, my lord? Does thou think Alexander looked like this in the dust? And that's when he goes and talk about how Alexander, you know, who conquered the known world, the ruler of all, the world that he knew. Right? Now, he also dies. Bye-bye, honey. Everyone dies. Every, okay. Everyone passes away. And then, you know, becomes part of the world and gets their body comes back a different way, right? Now, we're not going to go into a spiritual, um, religious discussion of what happens after you die. I don't mean that. But your body itself dies and becomes part of the earth and then becomes part of what grows out of the earth afterwards. It's a circle of life. The circle of life, right? Gosh, that was terrible. What's it? Oh, off tune, not even the right tune. Notes were bad, pitchy. I feel like, um, who's the guy that used to go, hey, dog, hey, dog? Um, do a dog. 
you get a dog on American Idol. Because you always go, oh, pitchy, pitchy, it's pitchy. Like, if they didn't know what to say to a singer, you go, oh, it's pitchy. Okay. Um, and it goes, but soft. A soft, wow, oh, here comes the king, the queen, the courtiers. Who is this they follow? And with such maimed rights, this death we took in the corpse, they followed it with desperate hand for it to its own life. Looks like this, the person had killed themselves the way the ceremony looks. It was a mistake, but it's fancy. The king is here, the queen, the courtiers must be somebody important. Couch, we're here. Let's, let's hide behind here. And then watch where we go. There's lots of hiding and sneaking in Hamlet, right? Okay. The Laertes is like, what ceremony else? That's Laertes. What ceremony else? And the doctor, the priest says, I've done all we can do. Her death is questionable. I.e., she killed herself. She shouldn't get a Christian burial. We should be showing shards of glass on her grave, not giving her this Christian burial. And if it weren't for the king who said, I had to do this, she wouldn't be getting a Christian burial. And then Laertes says, Lair in the earth, and from her fair and polluted flesh may violet spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministry angel shall my sister be when thou liest howling. When you're howling in the ground or in hell, my sister shall be an angel. Um, him says, what? Ophelia? The fair Ophelia? Now, he loves Ophelia. And he was mad. He was hurt because she broke up with him. And then she was mad because he felt like she betrayed her. But he loved her. And now she's dead? He goes away for a week and comes back and his, the woman he loves is dead? What? And then the queen says, sweets to the sweet, farewell. She scatters flowers. I hope thou shouldest have been my Hamlet's wife. I thought what thy bride bed to have decked, sweet maid, and not have strewn thy grave. I wish you had been my son's wife. I thought I'd put these flowers on your wedding bed, not on your grave. Um... And then Laertes leaps into the grave and says, hold off the dirt a while till I hold her my hands once more. Now pile your dust upon the quick and the dead, the living and the dead. Till on this flat mountain you have made to our top old Pelion or the skyish head of Blue Olympus. You know, bury me with her and pile the dirt as high as Olympus. I'll hold her. And then Hamlet comes from where he's hiding and says, what is he whose grief bears such an emphasis, whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder-wounded hearers? This is I, Hamlet the Dane. Now, look at the, look how it's written. It's back in blank verse. No pretending to be mad here. No um, silly pun played with uh, lowercase, with the lowercase, with the grave diggers. Um, none of that. Back in iambic pentameter, back in blank verse, tell the truth. I mean what I'm saying. And he comes down and says, this is I, Hamlet the Dane. What is he saying? When he calls himself the Dane. Not I'm a Danish person. Hamlet the Dane. I'll wait till you figure it out. Abby? Yes, that he is the rightful king. It's really what he's saying. It is I, Hamlet the Dane. And Laertes comes out of the grave and says, The devil take thy soul. Thou prayest not well. And then they grapple. They start to fight each other. And him is like, I prithee, take thy fingers from my throat, for though I am not splintive and rash, and we know he's not splintive and rash, he never does anything. He never acts. Yet I lie in me something dangerous. Let, let thy wisdom fear. Hold off thy hand. Pluck them asunder. Hamlet, Hamlet. Good, my lord, be quiet. His best princess to Why will I fight with him on this theme until my eyelids will no longer wag? Oh, my son, what name? I loved Ophelia! 40,000 brothers can out with all their quantity of love make up my sum. What wilt thou do for her? Oh, he is mad, there, Jesus. Oh, let the gods prepare him. Swoon, show me what thou do. Would weep, would fight, would fast, would tear thyself, would drink up Isol, eat a crocodile. I'll do it. He's like, you want to rant and rave? Whatever you say you do, I'll do it and go further. 40,000 brothers couldn't love her as much as I loved her. Just I'll come here to whine, to outface you the leaping in her grave, and to be very quick with her, and so will I. If thou art prey of mountains, let them throw millions of acres on us, till our ground singe in its pain against the burning zone, make us also like a wart. Nay, and thou mouth, I'll rant as well as thou. 
He's like, he's bad, he's bad, he's bad, he's bad. Don't worry about him. The hermit says, hear you, sir? What is the reason that you use me thus? I loved you ever, talking to Laertes. But it is no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew and dog will have his day. That might be a line that you've heard before, right? Uh, every dog will have his day. Well, that's from Hamlet, obviously. And Hamlet leaves. Now, <clears throat> I pray thee, good Horatio, wait upon him. Strengthen your, and then the king says to Laertes, all right, strengthen your patience in your last night's speech. Remember we talked about it? We had a plan. We're going to get rid of him. Don't worry. We'll put the matter to the present first. Good, Gertrude. Set some watch over your son. This grave shall have a living monument. An hour of quiet. Shortly shall we see till them in patience. I'll proceed till them in patience. Proceed with thee. They won't come to him. All right. Now, the next thing starts with Hamlet talking to Horatio about what happened on the ship. And I explained all that to you, right? With the fire ants and the urge maze and the end of that. So he says, Go to certain Rosencrans are going off to their death. And then Horatio's like, Really? And Hamlet says, uh, why, man, they did make love to this employment. They're getting what they deserve. They wanted to be spies for the king. They wanted to spy on me and try to and, and, and be a tool that the king can use. Well, this is what happens when you do that. When you undertake such um, mis uh, mischievous, not really, such deceit, dece deceitful, deceiving. Wow, this quarantine's got me, right? When you undertake such enterprises that are um, not only up and up, this is what happens to you. It's going to pop my head with the word I was trying to use, and I'll, I'll throw it out there. Right? They can make love this employment. Yes, they go and you know whatever. Okay, they're they're not they're nowhere near my conscience. Does it not think they stay? Oh, he says, and the king want to have me killed. And he goes, really? The king did this? Does it not think they stand me now upon? He hath he that hath killed my king. Claudius killed my king, my dad, whored my mother, popped in between the election and my hopes, stole the crown from me, thrown out his angle for my proper life, and was such cozenage. Tis not perfect conscience to point him on his arm, and it's not to be damned to let this kink of our nature come in further evil. Right? Uh, he killed my dad. Shouldn't I pay him back? He whored my mom. He took the, the throne from me. And Horatio says, he's going to know soon what happened. In England, and Ham says, it will be short, the enter his mind. And a man's life's no more than to say one. But I'm very sorry, good Horatio, but the Laertes I forgot myself. For by this Im for by the image of my cause I see the portraiture of his. His grief, you know, made me really get into my feels. I'll court his favors, but sure the bravery's grief did put me in a towering passion. I'll I'll try to make up with him, right? And then Osric comes in. And this is in the movie Osric is played by Robin Williams. This is another scene where it's a play, uh, uh, it's an entertaining family play between Osric and Hamlet. Hamlet makes fun of it, and Horatio kind of makes fun of it, and doesn't realize it. But basically, we don't, we're going to read all that, but he's telling him, hey, there is this um, um, contest, right, that the king has come, that they've, they've had. Laertes is going to want to challenge you to a fencing match, and the king has bet on you, and so will you come do this match? And it goes on for several pages about how this ostrich is so long-winded and it, they go back and forth. And then, okay, so someone then comes in and says, my Lord, this is on page 275, his majesty commended him to you by young ostrich who brings back him that you attend him in the hall. He says to know if your pleasure hold to play with Laertes or that you will take longer time. Are you ready now or are we going to play a little bit longer? And Hamlet says, I am constant to my purposes. They follow the king's pleasure. And this person speaks, I am ready now, or whatsoever. We'll find out he's ready to listen now. And the king and queen are all coming down in happy time. Oh, and the queen desires you to use some gentle entertainment to Laertes before you die. The queen wants to make up a Laertes before the fifth match. She will instruct you. All right. Now, Horatio says, this is important here. You will lose, my lord. And Hamlet says, I do not think so. Since he went into France, I have been in continual practice. I shall win at the odds. I think of it. So the first reason he said I'm going to do is, is I've been practicing. I think I'll win. I mean, even I have the odds. The king bet odds on me. So with with the odds, get, you know, getting some points, uh, I think I can win this. And then he says, but thou wouldst not think how ill all's here about my heart. It's funny. Something, I, I feel something is not right. Something is wrong. Oh, don't worry about it. Nay, hey, good, my lord. It's, it is but foolery, but it's such a kind of gang given as would perhaps trouble a woman's misgiving and maybe 
it would trouble a woman, uh, not a man, a man shouldn't worry about it. Hamlet never gets over his woman issues. Another example of it, right? Not condone, I don't condone this at all, what, what he says. And his, um, I can tell you why he has problems with, him, with women, with his mom and, and Ophelia and what's happened to him. I can tell you he's a product of his time, but that's not an excuse. It's kind of like we talked about Marlowe, why I liked Marlowe so much, was that Marlowe, remember Heart of Darkness, Marlowe was a man of his time who, at the beginning of the story, um, buys into the racism and the systemic racism um, and acts as much, right? And he's, and he's sitting as in the pose of um, ascetic, right? Sunken cheeks, yellow skin, like he needs this transformation. And then he takes two steps forward and one step back and two steps forward and one step back and two steps forward and one step back and getting over this racism, getting over this. We, we're bringing the light to Africa to help the, the those that are not even really quite human Right? We're going to bring them the light. We're going to save them. And whites are here and blacks are here. You know, he's like, oh, I'm getting closer. And then whoops. And again, closer. And then whoops. And again, closer. And whoops. You know, and as he's, as he's transforming and becoming a more enlightened person on this topic, he still has all this um, prejudice against, not prejudice, um, discrimination against women. Right? Seeing women as equal. Imagine me, Charlie Marlowe, going to putting the women to work, asking a woman for a job. I can't believe I did that. And while he's still got that, he still has those problems. And the reason I liked Marlowe so much, not because he discriminated against women, right? But what I said to you is because he was real, a real person. And as he's going through this transformation in Africa, I know I'm talking about hard darkness all of a sudden. This transformation on his trip to up the Congo and Africa and back, and, and the point, it's the furthest point of navigation and the culminating point of his experience, the meeting with the Kurtz. And he begins to transform. He tells us when the story's over, he's sitting in the pose of a meditating Buddha, as though he went from ascetic through enlightenment to a Buddha because he needed that transformation to tell us right? the, the right transformative effect on himself. He stays a real person. And so when I was going from my upbringing and what I grew up in, I we talked all about that. And I began to look at my life and my feelings and my uh, beliefs and my thoughts and what sat right with me and what was wrong and how I tried to change and be a better person. And it's not easy like this. It doesn't happen like this. But given enough time, if I live another hundred years, I can get rid of most of my faults. Nah, I got so many faults. Um, you know, a uh, droll thing life is that mysterious arrangement of merciless logic for some futile purpose that comes too late, a crop of, uh, a crop of unextinguishable regrets, right? That you could do nothing about but anyway given enough time maybe a couple hundred years 500 years people could make all the mistakes learn all they need to learn and become better <laughs> or maybe maybe not i don't know but i, I digress but not really it, it, the point is that maybe i just got my point here uh the point being that Hamlet still has these problems, these feelings about women, and and he hasn't, he hasn't come all, it hasn't come completely around there, but he will. Um, actually, he doesn't come around, but God, I don't know why I said he will. I just, I just came out of my mouth. Not even, not even um, he's about to die. We know he doesn't, not gonna have enough time to actually come around. But still, okay. So go back to what Hamlet, Hamlet's saying. He's saying there's something wrong. There's something in my heart that um, I got to deal with. All right, sorry. He says, um, if, Horatio, if your mind dislike anything, obey it. I will forestall their repair, Heather, and say you are not fit. If you feel it's not, if something's wrong or something's not quite right, if you're not white, if you're ill or something, I can tell him to wait. We'll do this later. And Hamlet says, not a wit. We defy augury, this fortune telling, looking at omens and trying to decide the future, right? There is a special providence in the fall of a sparrow that everything happens. Now, you know how I feel about this. Everything happens for a reason, but... They're, they're, everything is planned that um, nothing is left to chance, okay? There's a special providence in the fall of the, in the death of one sparrow. If it be now, tis not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. The readiness is all. Since no man of ought uh, since no man of aught he leaves knows, what is it to leave betimes? Let be. Since no, when you die, you don't know what's left behind anyway. So who cares if you die early? 
think back just for a second to a Hausman's one we read um, to an athlete dying young. And then he says, good job, lad, for dying young before you were could see your records broken, before you could see the crowd stop cheering for you. When you die, you don't know what's left behind in the world. What does it matter if you die early, right? But here, I love, love, love this quote from Hamlet. The readiness is all. When he says, if it be now, it is not to come, it means if my death, if I'm going to die now, then it won't be later. If it, it won't be later, it's going to be now. If it's not going to be right now, it will come. I'm going to die. We're all going to die. It's going to happen. Accepting it. The readiness is all. And I love this quote so much that when in 2006, when I directed Hamlet at Aquinas, and I swear it's one of the best things we ever did at Aquinas, not because I directed it, because we had an incredible group of theater kids that put this thing together. They worked with me. We, we worked together, blood, sweat, and tears. Every word of it, right, we did. Um, it was long. It was long. I may cut a few words. I may cut the Ronaldo scene again. But besides that, it was a long play. Uh, like two and a half hours we did it. We did it twice on Saturday. We did it with fire alarms going off. Um, <laughs> Because we had to stop, we had we had smog going, um, and uh, it actually wasn't that to set the alarm off, but we stopped it. Alarm went off a couple times. These kids were incredible. They knew what they were saying. They gave the performances of a lifetime. And Michael Haller played Hamlet, and oh my goodness, he learned every one of these lines and just absolutely nailed it. Royce Blyer and D. Um, and D ref, who's not D ref, D and Tommy got married. Uh, and Tommy and oh, just oh my goodness, it goes Keith Osgood was in it. It just goes on and on and on. It was incredible, 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 incredible. Jessica Bateman was in it, and um, gosh, it was just amazing. It was amazing. All right, I loved it so much. As I well, this tangent, I loved it so much that the quote I put on everything. For the, for the marketing, for the play, wasn't to be or not to be, or the dog will have his day, or um, to, to sell a flesh, or any of the other lines. Uh, there's something rotten in the state of Denmark that everybody knows and has heard from Hamlet. But I put the readiness is all. Look at Hamlet, he's changed. I said the Hamlet that comes back from this um, aborted trip to England is gonna be different than the Hamlet that left. He was melancholy. He was talking about revenge. No, my thoughts be bloody or be nothing worse. Now I can drink hot blood. Now I'll do such things the day would quake to look on. <coughs> Sorry. It was all about, woe is me. I'm going to kill my uncle. Why would I kill my uncle? Now I'm going to do it. Oh, New Year's resolution moment. And now he's back. And all of a sudden, he has got his back transformation. And he says, I think I'm going to win this match, but if I don't, it's okay. I feel something is wrong. I feel there's something is up. And if I die, I die. Let be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Whisper words of wisdom. Let it be. All right. So they come in and they say, let's go, let's do this fight. Hamlet, take my, here, take my hand, Laertes, let's, let's try to, you guys got to make up first. And Hamlet says, I wronged you, sir, I'm sorry. Uh, what I've done that you might make your honor and exception roughly awake, I hear proclaim was madness. It wasn't me, it was my madness. I'm sorry that I injured you. I'm sorry that I hurt you. I've shot my arrow over the house and I've hurt my brother. I didn't mean to do it. And Laertes says, I'm satisfied for right now. Later, let's let some older, older, wiser people judge and, and come to a final conclusion. But for now, fine, let's let's play this game. And for Laertes, maybe a little bit of that is true. A little bit of it is, let's get this thing going because I'm about to kill you. Laertes has this sword that has, without the protective covering, that he's put the poison on. He's going to try to stay, you know, scratch him or stab him with. And then the king has got the poison drink. Well, the drink is going to put the poison, you know, uh, jewel in. He's going to try to get him. This pearl is mine! Let's play. I embrace it freely. All right. <clears throat> <coughs> Give them the foils, young Osric. Cousin Helmet, you know the wager very well. You're on the wrong side. I do not fear it. I've seen you both, but since it is he is better, we have therefore odds, the king says. But now let's move here. Laertes says, this is too heavy. Let me see another. 
And Hamlet says, this likes me well. These foils have all a length, right? This pleases me. They're all the same. Laertes, so why, Laertes, are you saying that this foil doesn't, that this foil is too heavy? You need a different one, right? That's Laertes' way of getting the one that's ready to go <laughs> kill him with. And kind of like, they're all the same, right? What's up? The king says, here, I'm going to put up this wine. If Hamlet gets the first hit or in, gives the first or second hit with a quit and answer the third exchange, I'll drink. Um, and then he says, uh, and in the cup, a union shall he throw, a pearl, richer than wet, which four successive kings in Denmark's crown have worn. Come on, sir. Come, my lord. Ding, 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 ding. One. No. Judgment. A hit. A very probable hit. So Hamlet gets the first hit. Okay. They take a break. They get ready to go again. And the king says, stay. Give me drink. And he drinks. And his helmet, this pearl is thine. Here's to thy health. He drinks, drops the pearl in the thing, and says, Give him the cup. Give the cup to Hamlet. Now the wine is poisoned. He wants Hamlet to drink it. And Hamlet says, Well, play this bout first. Set it, set it by a while. Come. And then they go, ding, 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 ding. Another hit. What say you? Um, a touch, a touch. I do confess it. Our son shall win. And the queen says, he's fat and scant of breath. Here, Hamlet, take my napkin, rub thy brows. The queen carouses to thy fortune, Hamlet. And she picks up the cup of poison. Oh, no. And he goes, good madam. Like, hang, you know, thank you, and hang on. And king says, Gertrude! Do not drink. Now, okay. It's hard when you're reading. But it's this ding, 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 it's loud, it's loud, and then the son is quiet. She picks up the drink, goes, I drink to my son, Hamlet! And the king goes, Gertrude! And he turns and looks, what? Do not drink. Now, she has obeyed him the entire play. There's one instance earlier that, that you were reading where um, she, he has to ask her a couple times to come before she actually does what he says, right? Before it was like, yes, my lord, yes, my lord. And now she's like, mm. And then Hamlet told her what that he killed her husband, so now not so much. Yes, my lord, yes, my lord. And here she disobeys him for the first time. She doesn't do what he says as his wife or the queen or as a woman or as a subject, right? Gertrude, do not drink. <laughs> I will, my lord, I pray you, pardon me. Drinks of the wine, and the king is in a side. It is the poison cup. It is too late. I dare not yet. I dare not drink yet, madam. By and by. Come, let me wipe my face. She's, she's hard to, you know, get a little, you know. My Lord, I'll hit him now. I do not think it. And, and then as an aside, and yet it is almost against my conscience. So Laertes does have a conscience. Laertes is feeling a little guilt about what's going on here. He's just watched the queen drink the, the poison wine. He's like, I'll hit him. But I don't know that I've seen it. And then Hamlet says, come for the third Laertes, you divide dally. I pray you pass with your best bodice. I'm afraid you make a wanton of me. I'm afraid, and it, look at the thing. Uh, indulge me as if I were a spoiled child. And now, so he, he, he kind of pokes Laertes a little bit, metaphorically, which pisses Laertes off. He's like, oh yeah, fine. You know, and go back at it. Whereas he was feeling a little guilty just for a second, and then he gets his emotions back up. And we know he's a man of rash actions and he just he just oh emotion 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 i'm gonna act okay um ding, 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 ding. have it you now and laertes wounds hamlet now what this is usually played is this is a cheap shot right when they're not usually it's when he says um say you so come on he leaps and goes whoosh, and scratches hamlet with it and he and he whoosh, Gets him, it gets him in the arm. And remember, just a little bit of poison and, and blood mixed with that blood in his arm, Hamlet's dead. Nothing can save him. Laertes wounds Hamlet, then they, Hamlet's like, looks at it and, and goes after Hamlet, uh, Laertes, and they fight. Uh-oh, we got sad, we got sad daughter. Hang on one second. Okay, problem solved. Wait. I thought I heard crying. All right, problem solved. So he wounds Laertes, wounds Hamlet, and then they, Hamlet's like, what the? And they goes after and they fight, fight. And in the scuffle, 
a slip sword. So Hamlet picks up Laertes' sword and looks at it and goes, Oh, no protective cap on yours, I see. And then it began to ding, 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 fight again. But now, like really fight, because it's not fencing, now it's fighting. Hamlet's mad. The king says, part them, they're incensed. No, oh, come again. And the queen, boom, falls. Look to the queen there, ho! Oh, they bleed on both sides. How is it, my lord? How is it, Laertes? Um, oh, gosh, I skipped the part. I'm sorry. I, really stop what you're doing. Hamlet gets the, gets the sword. They stick to the thing. They fight, 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 fight. And he stabs Laertes. Or in the movie version, Reynolds version, he scratches him and then throws him off the top balcony. But anyway, either way, he wounds him with the uh, rapier that has the poison on it. So now they're both have been poisoned. And Laertes is flat on the ground somewhere. The queen drops. Laertes is down. How is it Laertes? And Laertes says, why is a woodcock to my own springe, ostrich? If you look at your thing, it means I'm like a stupid bird caught my own trap. This is my own trap, and I'll be killed with my own poison. I'm justly killed with my own treachery. And Hamlet's like, how does the queen? The king, she swoons to see them bleed. And the queen's like, no, no, the drink, the drink. Oh, my dear Hamlet, the drink, the drink. I am poisoned. And she dies. Oh, villainy, ho, oh, let the door be locked. Treachery, seek it out. And Laertes says, it is here, Hamlet. Hamlet, thou art slain. No medicine in the world can do thee good. And the, there's not half an hour's life. You're not gonna live for 30 more minutes. You're gonna die before, within 30 minutes. The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unbathed and envenomed. The foul practice hath turned itself on me. Lo, here I lie, never to rise again. Thy mother's poisoned, I can no more. The king, the king's the blame. And he says, the point in venom too, then venom to thy work. Ah, into the king. In the movie, he throws it across the, the whole room and gets the king. And he swings down on the chandelier. Treason, treason. The king says, oh, yeah, defend me, my friends, I'm hurt. Then Hamlet goes to the king, gets right in his face, and he grabs the poison cup. And then he says, here, thou incestuous, murderous, damned and day. And he takes the poison, and he's trying to make him drink of the poison, too. He says, drink of all this poison. Is thy union here? And look at that pun on the word union. It's over here, too, but look at it. The union is the pearl, the poisoned pearl that, that, that caused the wine to be poisoned to kill Gertrude. But also, is there a union here, man and wife, a husband and wife, as man and woman, they're one flesh. Remember earlier, she goes, therefore, my mother, is there, joy, is there a union with my mom here? You die too, you scumbag. If you've done Hano Stradamus, I'll pour bleed Drano on your grave, you. Follow my mother, and the king dies. And Laertes says, he has justly served. It is a poison tumbled by himself, mixed by himself. He did the poison in the cup. Exchange forgiveness for me, noble Hamlet. Mine and my father's death come not upon thee, nor thine on me. Your death not, your death won't be on my conscience, and my death and my father's death not on your conscience. So his last words is to forgive me. Let's forgive each other, and he dies. So now we got laying there. We've got the queen's dead. We have Laertes is dead. The king is dead. In the movie, we um, the king has Osric, uh, uh, Randall has Osric die too. <clears throat> Hamlet says to Laertes as he's dying, Heaven make thee free of it. I follow thee. I am dead, Horatio. Wretched queen, adieu. Right? Even to the, even as she's lying there dead and he's about to die, his last words to his mom are, Wretched queen, adieu. You that look pale and tremble at this chance, that are but mutes or audience in this act. All the people watching the, the fencing match. Had I but time, as this fail sergeant death, a strictness arrest, oh, I could tell you, Ugh. but let it be. Horatio, I am dead. Thou livest, report me and my cause aright to the unsatisfied. It was like, I'm dying. If I had more time, I could tell you more stuff. Hamlet's dominated this play. He has more lines than any other Shakespeare character. He has more percentage of this play than any other character in any other play. 
He's like, if I have more time, I could talk more. I could tell you more. All I've done is talk the entire play, but I have more to say. This is a long video. Hope you've, hope you've broken this up into two. Horatio says, never believe it. I am more an antique Roman than a Dane. Here's yet some liquor left. I'm more of a Roman who have fallen sort of. Remember, it's Caesar. After Caesar was killed, Brutus um, wanted someone to hold his sword for him so he could kill himself, right? The, no, the nobility and suicide and noble death. He goes, I'm more of an antique Roman than a Danish person. Here, let me have some of this. Yeah, there's yet some liquor left. I'll kill myself uh, and join you, right? <clears throat> and Hamlet says, as thou art man, give me the cup. Let go by heaven I had. No, Horatio, you have not been killing yourself. Oh God, Horatio, what a wounded name. Thinks any less unknown shall I leave behind me. You, you can't die and leave this the way it is. Um, you are not going to know what happened. People are going to be confused. Someone's got to tell the story. Someone's got to set things right. If thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, I sent thee from felicity a while. Deny yourself the pleasure of death. Don't kill yourself yet. Stay alive and suffer the grief, the heartache of, of losing me and everybody else. Go back to to be or not to be speech. Uh, is it noble in the mind to suffer the outrageous, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing in them? You know, to end the natural flesh, the, the, the shock and pain that the natural flesh is there to, uh, Got jumbled in my mind, but that which we are human, we we suffer, we have pain. Is it better to suffer that, or is it better to kill yourself? And he says, the fear of what's after death keeps us from from killing ourselves, because who would live the horrible life of just kill ourselves and be done with it? Here he says to Horatio, don't kill yourself. Wait a little bit longer. Suffer the agony of the grief of the loss. Right? Just tell my story. To set things right. And in this harsh world, draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. And then, <laughs> guns firing noises. What warlike, what warlike noise is this? And Oscar comes in. Young Fortinbras with conquest come from Poland to the ambassadors of England gives us warlike volley. Right. So remember, this is the this is the scene. <clears throat> Fortinbras wanted to attack Denmark. They figured it out. He got called on the carpet by his uncle and said, you can't fight Denmark, you can go fight Poland. They walked through Denmark to get to Poland to fight for that piece of ground that wasn't big enough for to bury the people that died fighting for it. And now they're coming back to fight Denmark, right? And how Claudius oh, couldn't figure that one out. He's a stupid man, uh, stupid, stupid king. Um, so he's back to, to, to take over Denmark. So he's come back uh, with his army the ambassador from England is coming to tell them what? That his commandment is done. What was his commandment? Kill Rosencrantz and Gillenstern. But it wasn't really his commandment. His commandment was to kill Hamlet. Hamlet changed it, remember? But the, kid, the ambassador from England is coming to say, hey, got the note, did it, we're all good, thanks. Okay. And Fort Ross coming this way, he gives this warlike volley to the ambassador of England as we're coming to take over Denmark. <clears throat> oh. I die, Horatio. The potent poison quite overcrows my spirit. I cannot live to hear the news from England, but I do prophesy the election lights on Fort Ross. He has my dying voice, so tell him with the occurrence more or less which has solicited. The rest is silence. He dies. Fort Ross's company says, I give my voice that Fortinbras be the next king of Denmark. Fortinbras has come to take over, to uh, overthrow the king and, and, and to be the ruler. There's nobody to overthrow. They're all dead. He can walk right in and pick up the crown and go, oh, I'll be king here. And Hamlet says, I do prophesy the election lights on Fortinbras. I give you my, my, I give you my vote. But I say Fortinbras is the next king. Follow what happened here. The rest is silence, and Hamlet dies. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Vroom, vroom. Why does a drum come hither? And then 
Ford Bros comes in. Where is this sight? What is it you would see? If aught of woe or wonder, cease, cease your search. If you're looking for woe or wonder, you found it. This quarry cries on havoc. O oh, proud death, what feast is toward thee in thine eternal cell that thou so many princes that a shot so bloodily has struck? Look at all, the whole royal family is dead on the floor. And Laertes. And then the ambassador comes in and says, This sight is dismal, and our affairs from England come too late. The ears are senseless that should give us hearing to tell them this commandment is fulfilled, that Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Where should we have our thanks? Now, we talked about Hamlet being, I mean, the Lion King of Aunt Disney's version of the Hamlet story, right? And Hamlet one and a half, uh, Lion King one and a half, if you saw that, was uh, the story of Timon and Pumbaa. And it's the Lion King going on behind the scenes and you only focus on Timon and Pumbaa. So um, you see the stuff going on in the background and you focus on Timon and Pumbaa and, the, and their part in it. And then you follow them around. So when they weren't in the Lion King, what were they doing? We find out in one and a half, right? Tom Stepard did a play called Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead from this line right here. And it's the Hamlet play, but from the perspective of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. So Hamlet stuff's going on in the background while Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are doing their thing in their play. So it's kind of cool. It's a reconnection. And the Tom Stepard play is, is hilarious. If you ever get a chance. Uh, and find it somewhere, watch it. And the master says, where should we get our thanks for killing these two yodels? And Horatio says, not from his mouth, not from the king's mouth, had the ability of life to thank you. He never gave commandment for their death. He gave commandment for Hamlet's death. But since so jump upon this bloody question, you from the Polack Wars, Fort and Bross, and you from England, how are here arrived, give order that these bodies, high in a stage, be placed to the view, and let me speak to the yet unknowing world how these things came about. Let me tell people what happened here. So shall you hear of carnal, bloody, and unnatural acts, of accidental judgments, casual slaughters, of deaths put on by cunning and forced cause, and in this upshot, purposes mistook fawn on the inventor's heads. Those who have concocted plans um, were killed by their own plans. All this can I truly deliver. Let us haste to hear it. I call the noblest to the audience. For me, with sorrow, I embrace my fortune. I have some rights of memory in this kingdom, which now claim to, not, now to claim my advantage doth invite me. In other words, here's the crown off the dead king there. I pick it up. I put it on. Sits on the throne. I will be king. And Horatio says, of that I shall have also cause to speak. And from his mouth, Hamlet, whose voice will draw one more. Uh, he, he said the same thing. Let this same be presently performed, even while men's minds are wild, lest more mischance and plots and errors happen. Before more death happens because of what's happened here, let me explain. And Fort Cross, let four captains bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stage, where he was likely had to be put on to prove most royal. And for his passage, the soldiers' music and the right of war speak loudly for him. Take up the bodies. Such a sight as this becomes the field, but here she was much amiss. Go. Bid the soldiers shoot. Like the, the, the 21 gun salute um, for Hamlet's death and for all the bodies and all the dead people there, right? Whew. And thus comes an end of Hamlet. So really, Ham, does Hamlet ever avenge his father's death? Beach, you're right, no, right? He kills the king, yes. But why does he kill the king? Because the king killed his mom, really, right? When he kills him, when he acts rashly and says, oh, invade it and invade him too, then to thy work and stabs the king. Did he really have on his mind, oh, you killed my dad, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get vengeance? Or was that you were part of this plan with Laertes and I'm gonna die now because of this scratch, this, this wound. Laertes is dying. You were behind it all. My mom just, you let my mom just drink that drink and die. You die too, you son of a gun. Right? I don't know. We could debate that. Maybe it was on his mind. People have talked about that for centuries. Love Hamlet. I really do. I really do. I wish we could have done it together. It's really hard this way. Um, really hard not being able to see it. Uh, 
just let me talk about it and then get distracted by my family. And I'm sorry about that. Um, or looking out the window at my at my tree that's about to pop. When I went to buy this house, we came to visit to look at this house the first time. The tree out in front of the yard um, was a beautiful. It was pink. It was the most beautiful pink tree I've ever seen. I want I want that house. And it was one of the biggest selling points of the house for me. Now the, the house is great, right? But we came back the later and it was like, what happened to my pink tree? And my wife said, you didn't just have to think all the time, did you? I'm like, oh, no, of course not. Yeah, where'd my pink tree go? The pink comes out for about three days and then all the blossoms fall off and just clean the rest of the rest of the stuff. So it's turning pink now. I love it. I love it. All right. So I think I'm going to stop there. Um, the readiness is all. This has been a really long video. I'll probably tell you on online to break it up into two videos to do. Um, and I will put up an assignment. I'll put up a Hamlet assessment for us to do um, that you can do. Um, I have an idea of what we can do in this long distance crisis we're in the world. Okay. All right, so I'll stop there. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll close it down. I love you guys. I miss you. Um, maybe we'll Zoom next week. I've been messaging up on the, on the on the website about that. Uh, looks like nobody wants to go first. Never, no one wants to go this week, so we'll try to do a couple next week. And maybe Erin um, can go first because she mentioned it. Uh, I know Rachel wants to go. Francesca needs to go. Mackenzie, I know you still need to go. Uh, Isabella, I know you still need to go. Um, some of you have mentioned it, so. All right, I'm getting morose here. I'll stop. I will catch you next time. Love you all. Be happy, be healthy.